Thank you very much. It is truly a humbling honor to be recognized in this way, particularly considering the ex exalted company with whom I stand. As a musician, one tends not to spend a lot of time thinking beyond the immediate challenge of learning the next piece or practicing a particularly difficult passage. I am in a very fortunate position, however, as music director of the New York Philharmonic, on a daily basis, I am able, indeed compelled, to consider the wider ramifications of what we do. For music has a unique power as a driving cultural force, one that has been abused by dictators, as well as harnessed by great democracies. One of my most important, important responsibilities is curating a paradigm shift in the world of orchestras. We are evolving in a deeply meaningful way that has moved orchestras to an increasingly prominent place on the world stage. Traditionally, orchestras played concerts for the same subscription audiences week after week and maybe occasionally performed for a different audience on tour. Of course, standard concerts are still a large part of what we do. But today, reaching a widely diverse audience in a variety of ways is central to our mission. The New York Philharmonic is involved in significant educational and cultural outreach initiatives that have created major ties and partnerships in New York City as well as abroad. Our new Orchestra Academy in Shanghai establishes our footprint in a way that allows us to build artistic relationships with a new audience and will also profoundly affect the musical learning landscape in China. On another continent, we have established a biannual res residency in London at the Barbican Center through which we are able to engage with the local musical scene in many ways and on many levels, ranging from performance of repertoire that reflect our identity and priorities to immersive in-school programs that encourage and support children who want to compose. Over the years, the New York Philharmonic has made historically important tours that have highlighted music's power to bridge cultural divides. Leonard Bernstein famously took the orchestra to the Soviet Union in 1959. Lord Mazel and the orchestra performed in Pyongyang, North Korea in 2008, a boldly optimist gesture amidst greater efforts to build North Korea-US relations. Of course, we are not the only orchestra to act on the world stage. It seems as though orchestras are often among the first to be welcomed in places where relations are frosty or non-existent. The Boston Symphony's groundbreaking trip to China was a memorable harbinger of greater warmth between our two countries. And the recent Minnesota Orchestra experience in Cuba is a wonderful example of musical diplomacy. And Daniel Barenboim, with his West Eastern Divan Orchestra, has shown the world that cooperation and indeed true harmony are possible among people from various Middle Eastern countries. Because music is not political, it is human. It communicates without words or language. Perhaps that is why it helps us to say what we really feel in our hearts. I view this award as a recognition not of any personal achievement I've made, but rather of music itself and of its power to bridge divides and bring people together. Being a musician is a privilege I treasure every day, and it is an honor to be with you this evening. Thank you.